From Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl Thursday, March 16, 1944 Dear Kitty, The weather is lovely, superb. I can't describe it. I'm going up to the attic in a minute. Now I know why I'm so much more restless than Peter. He has his own room where he can work, dream, think, and sleep. I am shoved about from one corner to another. I hardly spend any time in my double room, and yet it's something I long for so much. That is the reason, too, why I so frequently escape to the attic. There and with you, I can be myself for a while. Just a little while. Still, I don't want to moan about myself. On the contrary, I want to be brave. Thank goodness the others can't tell what my inward feelings are. Except that I'm growing cooler towards Mummy daily. I'm not so affectionate to Daddy, and don't tell Margot a single thing. I'm completely closed up. Above all, I must maintain my outward reserve. No one must know that war still reigns incessantly within. War between desire and common sense. The latter has won up till now. Yet will the former prove to be stronger of the two? Sometimes I fear that it will, and sometimes I long for it to be. Oh, it is so terribly difficult never to say anything to Peter. But I know that the first to begin must be he. There's so much I want to say and do. I've lived it all in my dreams. It is so hard to find that yet another day has gone by and none of it comes true. Yes, Kitty. Anne is a crazy child. But I do live in crazy times and under still crazier circumstances. But still, the brightest spot of all is that at least I can write down my thoughts and feelings. Otherwise, I would be absolutely stifled. Yours, Anne. Friday, March 17th, 1944. Dear Kitty, Margo and I are getting a bit tired of our parents. Don't misunderstand me. I can't get on well with Mummy at the moment, as you know. I still love Daddy just as much, and Margot loves Daddy and Mummy. 
But when you're as old as we are, you do want to decide just a few things for yourself. You want to be independent sometimes. If I go upstairs, then I'm asked what I'm going to do. I'm not allowed salt with my food. Every evening regularly, at a quarter past eight, Mummy asks whether I ought not to start undressing. Every book I read must be inspected. I must admit that they are not at all strict, and I'm allowed to read nearly everything. And yet we are both sick of all the remarks, plus all the questioning that go on the whole day long. Something else, especially about me, that doesn't please them. I don't feel like giving lots of kisses anymore. And I think fancy nicknames are terribly affected. In short, I'd really like to be rid of them for a while. Margot said last evening, I think it's awfully annoying the way they ask if you've got a headache or whether you don't feel well if you happen to give a sigh or put a hand to your head. It is a great blow to us both suddenly to realize how little remains of the confidence and harmony that we used to have at home. And it's largely due to the fact that we are all ski with here. By this I mean that we are treated as children over outward things. And we are much older than most girls of our age inwardly. Although I'm only 14, I know quite well what I want. I know who is right and who is wrong. I have my opinions, my own ideas and principles, and although it may sound pretty mad from an adolescent, I feel more of a person than a child. I feel quite independent of anyone. I know that I can discuss things and argue better than Mummy. I know I'm not so prejudiced. I don't exaggerate so much. I am more precise and adroit. And because of this, you may laugh. I feel superior to her over a great many things. If I love anyone, above all, I must have admiration for them, admiration and respect. Everything would be all right if only I had Peter for I do admire him in many ways. He is such a nice, good-looking boy. Yours, Anne. Saturday, July 15, 1944. Dear Kitty, For in its innermost depths, youth is lonelier than old age. I read this saying in some book and I've always remembered it and found it to be true. 
Is it true that grown-ups have a more difficult time here than we do? No, I know it isn't. Older people have formed their opinions about everything and don't waver before they act. It's twice as hard for us young ones to hold our ground and maintain our opinions in a time when all ideals are being shattered and destroyed, when people are showing their worst side and do not know whether to believe in truth and right and God. Anyone who claims that the older ones have a more difficult time here certainly doesn't realize to what extent our problems weigh down on us problems for which we are probably much too young, but which thrust themselves upon us continually until after a long time we think we found a solution, but the solution doesn't seem able to resist the facts, which reduce it to nothing again. That's the difficulty in these times. Ideals, dreams, and cherished hopes rise within us only to meet the horrible truth and be shattered. It's really a wonder that I haven't dropped all my ideals because they seem so absurd and impossible to carry out. Yet I keep them because in spite of everything I still believe that people are really good at heart. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the ever approaching thunder which will destroy us too. I can feel the suffering of millions and yet if I look up to the heavens I think it will all come right, that this cruelty too will end, and that peace and tranquility will return again. In the meantime, I must uphold my ideals, for perhaps the time will come when I shall be able to carry them out. Yours, Anne.